About a year ago, I started this little fabrication business out of my leaking barn shop. At first, it was just a way to build some capital and see if I even had what it takes to make this work. So I built my own CNC plasma cutter from scratch. I started selling signs, took on repair jobs, and slowly worked my way into fabrication. It was scrappy, it was messy, and honestly, most of the time, it didn't feel like a business at all. But the truth is, none of that was ever the real reason I started this journey. This was just the warm up. The goal was always way bigger, to create my own product line. And today I'm finally taking that first step by building my very first mini skid steer bucket. And it was built here, not in a massive factory behind a huge team of engineers. It was built in my barn shop with the tools that I've scraped up together. This is where it all begins. With a decently sized sheet of 3 sixteenths HRPO. Well, it actually started a month or two prior to this in CAD, but that's all proprietary information now. So today we're picking up on the fun stuff and that starts with cutting out all the flat parts that we need to make this bucket. And surprising to every one of my usual viewers, but I actually put a little bit of thought into this and trying to make this bucket as cheap as possible so I can pass those savings on to the customer. And one of the ways I did that was I was able to nest all of the flat parts onto one flat four by three sheet that can drop into my plasma cutter and I can cut it in one go. But I didn't get that on the first try. I was riding my machine right at the limit, literally a fraction of an inch from the maximum width that I could cut. And even with the optimized nesting, I still ended up falling short on one piece but it wasn't too bad because it ended up being a little bit of an extra. Made it. Did exactly what I thought I was going to do over here, but this is not be how it's going to be. Dude, I'm getting excited. These turned out really nice. Then, of course, as per the usual, once I unloaded the machine, cleaned them off a little bit, we had to go ahead and remove all of that excess slag at the edges. I snapped a few pictures just because I thought they were looking extra smooth. And then I had an opportunity to do something really special. And I'm kind of shooting myself in the foot with it right now because I didn't grab enough video. Long story short, I teamed up with a local excavating company and got to test fit my mount and gain all of this guy's knowledge. So I'm super thankful for this and can't wait for a future partnership with these guys because he was just amazing. So definitely more on that to come when we show our R&D video. Dude, I was driving back home. Well, the fitment went really well. It fit perfect. Hey, make a U-turn. But I've realized I got my fishing gear in the back seat and we just pulled up on this dam and river. Let's see if we can't get ourselves a little fishy. Look at this spot. It's golden. Okay, it definitely just had something on and it just snapped my line. Something with teeth. I'm starting to think that fish with teeth was probably just a rock with teeth. <laughs> I just snapped off like four or five times. I'm heading out, because to be honest, I gotta take a dump. Check out this bad boy, guys. I just stopped down at a, another local fab shop where they have a massive brake press that they form this body for me. This is the main, this is the big kahuna for my mini skid steer bucket. Everything attaches to this, and it looks amazing right now. <laughs> I'm super pumped to get this thing unloaded and tacked up, but I'm gonna have to wait a week to weld everything together because I'm actually having one of my buddies who may or may not be a slightly better welder. Not that I'd ever admit that, but maybe I'm just looking for a little help. <laughs> Let's get this thing unloaded. And unload we did. I also just took a moment of silence, if you would be, to just try and envision the future. About a week later, we jumped right into fabricating the bucket. About seven in the morning, my buddy got here and we got right to work. You see here, I'm just hitting this cutting edge material with the Harbor Freight surface conditioner. 
strip all that mill scale off because I'm going to be spray painting this with liquid paint. And I've heard with the mill scale, if you don't remove that, your paint pretty much just flakes off. You're going to see us do something here. And it's because we didn't actually have the right clamps for this, but laying a tack down and then smacking it with a hammer just allows everything to shrink up really nice. Yeah. You would be amazed at the problems you can solve while smacking things with a hammer. <laughs> but next up, we were putting the side plates on, just using some standard magnetic squares, lining it up like how it was in the CAD model. And then again, we're going to be just tacking the bottom side of this and making sure that fitment is tight as well. But it's important we're only doing the bottom because as you'll soon see, the back of the bucket was not formed within the tolerance of the angles that we needed. So we actually had to bring in this gantry, not this gantry crane. We actually had to bring in this cherry picker to basically pull everything up until it matched the angle. Here we are supposed to be within about a half inch from the back and we were probably sitting closer to an inch, an inch and a half. So we definitely needed to bring that back somehow. And for the most part, this process actually went fairly smooth until we had it just about where we needed it. And myself decided to just give it one extra little. Needless to say, it's pretty obvious that we're definitely gonna have to figure out a different method how to do this next time. This part was just really slow and tedious and there's a lot of measuring back and forth. Not very efficient, but we did end up getting it figured out. Basically two man job. One guy just holds it at approximately a half inch. Then the other guy would tack it until we had both sides done. And by now, yes, you guys have noticed the masking that I'm trying to do. I know this can be a little bit distracting, but I really appreciate you guys for the understanding that not everything can always be shown. So I thank you guys for that. So let's jump back into it. So the next step in the build sequence was throwing on these wear bars. These are about a three inch by half inch piece of steel that really helps give some rigidity to the bucket. The next problem we ran into was the bottom of the bucket body was actually bowed in a little bit. So we had to figure out a way how to basically squish the wear bar and the body together. Perfect. I want to take a little bit of time to just basically discuss why did I choose the mini skid steer bucket or why did I choose to get into attachments anyways and a, a few of you guys know that I used to actually work at an attachment company and I loved working on the product like the product itself was just like all of those attachments I think they just look super cool and they're actually something that you make and it gets put to good use like I could cut signs all day long and they're just gonna hang up on somebody's wall building a product that actually gets tested day in and day out in an extreme environment I don't know what I'm trying to say but it just the badassery is on a whole nother level <laughs> And then why did I start with a mini skid steer? At first, I was actually gonna try to make the bucket body myself. I didn't have a press brake. And I was looking at press brake options like the Langweir Systems Titan 25 ton. And it seemed like the only sizes I could fit on a machine that I could possibly afford in the near future were gonna be all mini skid steers. But then I found this local welding company. They have a massive brake press and their prices are actually not that bad, especially if I just give them the parts to form. So we ended up going down that route. But then I got to thinking, who are the majority of users of mini skid steers? And from what I understand, it's gonna be local landscapers. It's gonna be a smaller companies that aren't taking on massive jobs, even just your neighbor or something. They might have a mini skid steer to help them plow snow. The entry level cost to get a mini skid steer versus a full size skid steer is a much smaller exponential factor. Geez, so what I'm trying to say is basically I can sell this direct to consumer instead of trying to go to a massive company like a dealer and I can still make sales starting out as a brand new brand so to speak. I don't have to really compete with those larger companies. As long as I can get my name out to my local neighbors and have a better price with a comparable product I should be sitting really well especially since this product is going to be better than the bigger brands. You know what they say, make it better, make it bigger, make it faster, make it cheaper. That's what I plan to do. <laughs> and we'll fill this in. Yeah, fill it in and hit that with the grinder. 
That thing looks pretty sweet though. While we were welding on all of the finishing touches, we started to notice something up at the front of the bucket that needed to be taken care of right away. Bucket edge is starting to pop up over here. So what we're gonna try to do to counteract that is basically throw a shim in the center and we're gonna give a negative camber to the bucket as we're welding. So when we unclamp it, everything should hopefully stay level. So we went ahead, threw a shim in there, sucked both edges of the cutting edge down, and then went ahead and finished the rest of the welding. If you guys look at these welds, you can obviously see that I did not weld these. <laughs> Since this is gonna be my first prototype bucket, I wanted to make sure that this bucket is gonna look as best as it can. So I really appreciate my buddy coming out here and giving me a few lessons on how to do it. And then finally, the last step came and that was to put our badge on the side of the bucket. And everything looked good until we went to go flip the bucket over. <laughs> we had it flipped, the orientation. Since we were welding the bucket upside down, we got a little bit disoriented and we actually ended up having to cut the badge off, re-weld it, no big deal. The paint should cover up all the scuff marks, but it's important we do the things correctly. It doesn't mean we can't make a few mistakes along the way. We just gotta make sure we correct those things. Okay, I was getting ready to paint this bucket. Currently, it's just getting held onto there by this hook. And I'm gonna have to be maneuvering this around, taking it outside on these caster wheels. I don't really feel comfortable with this teetering back and forth. So we're gonna have to make a side quest. Quest to get my swamp back. No, a quest to basically make a hanger. Oy. Okay, I got these cut out, the bird. So now I just need to go see if they fit. Hopefully there shouldn't be any problem. <coughs> Hooks in right under there. And the only thing that should be hitting is that point. But I'm already on a quest. A quest to get my swamp back. Well, it's just an ass. I made a quick and dirty fixture just to get this thing welded up as soon as possible. It wasn't really doing much, so precision was not a necessity. I don't know if it's just me, but doesn't this thing kind of look like Maui's hooks from Moana? And there you have it. Everyone in the comment section always hating on me about not wearing safety glasses or not being safe enough. I'm trying, guys. If it were the old me, I would have just left the single hook. Okay, we're going to turn the lights way down low for this one, and we're going to get into a little bit of paint prep. But for all of my younger viewers or people who just don't want to look at this, go ahead and just skip to the next part. Everyone else, enjoy. It's something about your hands on my body. And it feels better than any girl that I've ever been with. It's something about the way you just been Kidding, you sickos. I gotta get this job done, man. Come on, stop screwing around. I'll be the first to say that I have no idea what I'm doing when it comes to painting. But this is what I've seen online, is that you need to have a very clean workpiece free of dirt and oil. So what I did was wash the bucket, scrub it down with some Dawn dish soap and some hot water. And then I'm coming back through and gonna wipe the entire bucket clean of acetone. And then before painting, we're just gonna make sure that the bucket is as dry as possible so we don't get any water mixture. Okay, I got her all wiped down with acetone and she's looking a little less greasy. Okay, never sprayed this paint before, so this will be interesting. This is Sherman Williams Surechem. Right on the data sheet, I'm supposed to mix 10 to 20% by volume. I picked up this fancy kit from Harbor Freight. It has like a reusable measuring cup a mesh filter top, and then disposable liners. And pretty handy. And then when you're done through, like painting, I used this once already, you just take this cap off, throw the whole thing out. We're gonna move you guys so you don't get hit with the paint. And there you guys have it. I quick painted this up outside. It was a little windy, but not too bad. And then I had to wait probably three or four days before the bucket fully cured, where I could basically dig my fingernail into it and it didn't scratch it at all. Would I have rather went to a powder coat? Yes, but we can talk about that in the future when we start selling a few of these. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments, minus that last section where I was cleaning. <laughs> Let me know what you think about the bucket, any design ideas or tips that you guys might have. Otherwise, if you guys found value in this video, I would appreciate a like, comment, or subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.